open-mindedness. The ability to look past yourself, the ability to look past just today, the ability to go past thinking that you are the know-it-all, the ability to assume that there is more to learn, the ability to understand more than one perspective and be able to tolerate more than one opinion. And I, it's important to kind of define the concept of open-mindedness for us as Muslims, which is... Uh, the ability to have a tolerance for more than one view, to be able to look at things from more than one perspective, and to have the mental capacity, the mental faculty to look beyond the superficial or the immaterial things that distract people and being able to look at the crux of the issue, the internal most important aspect of an issue. The primary reason why people find it difficult to be open-minded is that they are ignorant of their own ignorance. And in fact, you know, as Muslims, we kind of appreciate the beauty of knowledge, but we also have this great resentment towards what we refer to as al-jahl al-murakkab, ignorance that is compounded. What does that mean? Ignorance is compounded is where a person does not know, but believes they know. SubhanAllah. It's one of the greatest fears that you and I should have is that you are entirely convinced of what you know that it is the only truth and you're unaware that there can actually be another legitimate opinion. And therefore, some of the great imams that we follow, for example, in our religious tradition, Al-Imam Abu Hanifa, Al-Imam Malik, Al-Imam Al-Shafi'i, Al-Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, radiyallahu an al-Sahaba wa rahimallahu a'immat al-Muslimin ajma'in. May Allah's mercy be upon all of them and their teachers, the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu They all have a very similar statement. They would say things like, مَا أَنَا عَلَيْهِ حق. وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِ بَاطِلٌ What I believe is what I believe to be the truth. The thing that I hold, I believe after studying it and learning it and understanding it, I believe I'm correct. And I believe you're wrong. وَرُبَّمَا أَنْتَ عَلَى حَقْ وَأَنَا عَلَى بَاطِلٌ But I will never ever take out of my heart the concept and the thought that perhaps you are right and I'm wrong. And that's a very important aspect of open-mindedness that we found in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet ﷺ was willing to engage with people and he tells us ﷺ that when you speak to people, speak according to what they can understand and approach people in a way that they can understand what you have to say because you don't want people to have a narrow-mindedness that is a result of our fancifulness in word. One man came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, O Messenger of Allah, I don't know how to ask Allah in the way that you and your Sahaba Abu Bakr and you know, you you guys are very eloquent. I'm not very learned. Uh, I don't know how to ask Allah for the things that I want. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, well, what do you say? He said, I say, Allahumma inni asaluk al-jannah. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-nar. Oh Allah, I ask you to protect me from hellfire. Oh Allah, I ask you to give me jannah and protect me from hellfire. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, How laha nudandin. Everything we say is asking for that ex exact same thing. And therefore the Prophet Sallallahu doesn't come to this man and say, No, I want you to say exactly what I said here and it has to be in this exact same way. This isn't something that he would do with all matters of, of, of teaching because there's always an openness for understanding that there's greater capacity capacity for people to approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways that may be different to other people as long as they are on the same sirat al-mustaqim, the same sunnah and way and process of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's important for you and I to consider the nearness of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his heart to other people's heart. And when I say open-mindedness, it becomes really important to also warn about being negligent. So I can't say, oh, I'm going to be open-minded, so let's get rid of hijab. Oh, let's be open-minded. Fajr is too early, you know, we're just going to pray it as soon as we wake up. Let's be open-minded as Muslims, you know, how else are we going to get to know each other? We need to date a little bit more and need to experience a dating culture and lifestyle within our communities. Oh no, we need to be more open-minded does not mean that we need to be people who bring about a negligence of our dealings and our treaties that we have as Muslims in our ibadah, in our akhlaq, 
in our teachings that were taught to us by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is a direct balance and a barrier between being open-minded and being a person who is watering down faith. Do not ever assume that being a person of open-mindedness is an assumption that I can change what I like and not like from the Qur'an based on my mindset. No, in fact, what it means is that you seek to understand the teachings and the rulings that Allah has set in the Qur'an through the path and framework and the habit of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The greatest way of understanding the Qur'an is not your mind, is in the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu the practice of a Sahaba, the practice of the early generations, they're the ones who codified, set, and made the standard of our deen. And therefore, one of the greatest assault that has entered upon the Muslim Ummah of the Prophet ﷺ in recent times, in the most recent times of the last 200 years, has been that people seek to undermine the thawabid, the things that have always been common amongst Muslims. It was unheard of in our Ummah in the past and present that, you know, the regulations that are taken as uh, things that could be today of liberty about halal and haram and the sexual ethics and and uh, sexual immorality that these are things can be un, um, un, undone with. But in fact, for us as Muslims, that the word of Allah is true. The word of the Prophet ﷺ is true, but we also appreciate that there are things that are gray in the middle. So the Prophet ﷺ gives us a code of conduct. He says, Al-halal ubayyin. That which is permissible is clear. Wal haram ubayyin. That which is haram is clear. Wa umur. In between the clear and the and the clear on the other side are things that mujtabiha, mutashabiha, things that are ambiguous. A person who isn't trained in Islam is not able to sift through it. And the Prophet ﷺ tells us to go, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ Allah says in the Qur'an, go back to the people of knowledge who have clarity and can separate between the issues with their open-mindedness and tolerance for the truth. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of them. Thinking is very much a product of our belief in Allah in the Qur'an. أَفَلَا يَعْقِلُونَ Do they not ponder over the Qur'an? أَوَلَمْ يَتَفَكَّرُوا Do they not think about the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ This Qur'an has been sent for people who deliberate and ponder and study the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unending mention in the Qur'an about the importance of thought and logic and learning and teaching. But never will we as believers make what we deduce logically be put forward over what was authentically revealed to us. And therefore, al-naql qabl al-aql. That which was revealed is always the standard of our practice, not what we understood of it as being a logical understanding. The wahy is always the center of our existence, not the understanding that we have. Because there may come a time, some of the times that we live in today, where the understanding of the majority is in direct contradiction of the revelation that was sent to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It might be that you and I live in a society where they have made permissible something that Allah has prohibited. It doesn't matter how many people agree to it, we do not have open-mindedness and say, we will change our Qur'an for it, we will change our sexual ethics for it, we will change our genderization of right and wrong for it. In fact, open-mindedness for us is that we understand the revelation in its practice, but we do not contradict it with our minds. وَصَلِّ اللَّهُمَّ وَسَلِّمْ وَزِدْ وَبَارِكْ عَلَى سَيِّدِنَا وَنَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ Your brother Yahya Ibrahim, wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.